Let's begin. We are on the in-class activity for 3.3b's worksheet. What this tells us to do is to graph these three functions, f of x, g of x, and h of x. So I'm going to graph the first function, x plus 3. And I'm going to use y equals mx plus b. I'm hoping you all know what the B is. If you know what the B is, the B for f of x is what number? Say it out loud, please. Three. Three. Perfect. And what's the M as a number? The M is what number? If you don't know, there's always an invisible one in front of an x. That means your rise over run is a 1 over 1. So here's how we graph it if you're unsure. The first thing I like to do is I like to label this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. The other things that I like to do, because this is a blank graph, is I like to say here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for my x, and I'm going to go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. I like to actually put the numbers on there. And same with my y's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. That, that way, I know which numbers are what. Let me zoom in a little bit for those of you who can't see. So there's our big graph. I have all the numbers. And the very first point I graph is this point here. This is where I begin. B stands for begin. It's the y-intercept. It's where it crosses the y-axis. Here's the y-axis. I'm going to try to find positive 3. You see it? Right here. Up 3. And then from this point, I look at the slope. The slope of the line through this point is up 1 over 1. A positive 1 is a rise of positive 1. And the run is his positive run. Rise 1, run 1. And I can do that multiple times. Up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. I could even, if I wanted to, I can use a negative over a negative because that's equal to a positive. I can go down 1, which is negative, and to the left 1, which is negative. Down to the left, if I want to. It's the same line. I take my ruler so that I can be accurate. Some of you need to be accurate. And I need to name the line. The name of this line that I have is F parenthesis X, F of X. I'm hoping you do the same thing. Copy what I have down on your worksheet. And if you understood what I did, you should be able to do g of x and h of x. Let's do g of x together. For me, I'm going to do this in a different color. That way you can tell them apart. Do I know what the y-intercept is for g of x? b is what number? 3. That means I go up 3, put a dot. Do I know what the slope is? What is the slope? And let's write that as a fraction. So when I know what the slope is, it is 2. It's 2 over an invisible 2 divided by 1 is 2. So I'm going to put over a dotted 1. That means from this black dot, I go up 2 over 1. I could do that a couple times. Up 2 over 1, but I'm off the graph. And so instead, I'm going to go negative 2 down and negative 1 because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Down 2 to the left 1. And now I have enough points that I can take my ruler and I can graph g of x. And I like to actually put g parenthesis x next to that line so I know which one is which. This is the name of the red line. This is the name of the blue, uh, the black line. <coughs> Do I have blue? I don't have blue, but I have a green pin over here. Third color. 
Last one, H of X. Do you know what the B is for H of X? Same spot. Do you know what the rise over the run is? Up one over two. Up one over two. I could even go down one to the left two if I want to. Down one to the left two. And I'm starting to see, I was trying to make this green, but it looks kind of black on her. I don't know if you can tell. And I need to label it. This is H of X. I have G of X, F of X, and H of X. So far, so good. Here's the question. What is the y-intercept for f of x's function, the red function? What is the y-intercept? And I want to be specific. If you said 3, that's OK. That's not like a scholar would write it. A scholar would write it as an ordered pair. A scholar is going to write it in parentheses. And it's going to say that the x-coordinate is 0. And the y-coordinate is 3. Remember, these are in alphabetical order. x, then y, 0, 3. That's how you would write the y-intercept for f of x, the red function. Do you know what the y-intercept for g of x is? Do you know what the y-intercept of h of x is? They all intercept the y-axis at this point. 0, 3, 0, 3, 0, 3. Um, then it asks, which graph is the steepest? And all you have to do here, since we've named them f of x, g of x, and h of x, is you're going to pick which one is the steepest. f of x, g of x, or h of x, which one? G of x. Which one is the least steep? Piece of cake, right? So the very first concept is, do you remember how to graph? And then the second way we're going to test it is, can you match the correct equation with the correct graph? When you look at y equals x, uh, 1 fourth x minus 2, is that this graph? Graph 1, graph 2, graph 3. Is 4x minus 2, is that graph 1, graph 2, or graph 3? Is y equals x minus 2, uh, graph 1, graph 2, graph 3? Do you know which ones are which? Put down your guesses. I will re reveal the answers in a moment. First graph is three. Second graph is third graph is there are your answers. If you notice this, the B is the same for all three graphs. The Y intercept is the same. How does changing the value of M affect the graph of the equation. What does the M do? What does it change? The M changes the slope. In other words, the rise over the run. Some people call that steepness. If you were a roofer, that's somebody who puts roofs on houses. You would call it the pitch. How steep is the roof? Are you going to slide off it? Is it easy to walk on it? M changes the slope, the pitch of the line. And then what we're going to do on numbers 4 and 5 is we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to start it, and then you're going to finish this on your own. Number 4 says f of x equals negative 2x plus 4. This is where it gets harder because we have a negative slope this time. 
What's B? Okay, then I like to get my graph paper ready. I like to go and say this is our, my X, this is my Y. I like to number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. I like to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. And then I like to do my y-intercept first. My y-intercept is it's where it crosses the y-axis. Now my slope is negative 2 over what number? I want you to know that when you put over 1, it's over a positive 1. That this negative 2 means that the rise, instead of rising 2, you're going subtracting 2. That means from this point, instead of going up 2, you're going down 2, and then the 1 is a positive to the right 1. Down 2 to the right 1. And for you advanced kids in here who are honors students, you know who you are. This is the same thing as is equal to 2 over negative 1. A po negative divided by a positive is the same thing as a positive divided by a negative. I could also rise 2 and go to the left 1. Guess what? This point is on the line as well. That proves to you that a negative divided by a, ne uh, by a positive is a negative and a positive divided by a negative is a um, negative. I hope I said that right. I'm not sure if I did. What's up? Large or extra large? Extra large. Okay. Oh, you got an extra shirt? Yes, I got enough time to do it. Very nice. Thank you, sir. There you go. Let me see where they're at. I think these are right. Is that it? Yes. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very much. You're welcome, sir. Appreciate it. So, you see how I graphed it? Oh, I forgot to label it. I forgot to give it a name, f of x. Can you do the same thing for g of x? Can you do the same thing for h of x? So let me give you four to five minutes for you to graph g of x, for h of x, write the y-intercepts. You may have trouble for x-intercepts, but we'll talk about what those answers are. And then do number five as well, and then we'll, we'll go and continue. Let me give you some time. I'll stop the recording.